So um, Kathy just said she wants to see the comments that people are leaving on, on Facebook too, so that's great. Um, uh, this morning we are going to be continuing on with uh, the kind of the Exodus 24 format. And just to remind you guys all that we're on both Facebook Live right now and over here on my computer on, on Zoom, so you can tune in uh, either way. If you're not receiving the Zoom link via email, then uh, that means that uh, the church's database doesn't have your current email right now. And so if you guys want to uh, send that into the church, uh, I can get you the, the link for the Zoom um, as well, which gives us a little bit more interaction. I mean, the typing in is nice on Facebook, but I actually hear people's voices and see their faces on Zoom. So you actually have to uh, you know, manage the bedhead, I guess, over here on this side. <laughs> but uh, all the ladies look beautiful. They, they got themselves put together for this morning, so. Um, uh -oh. Who is that? Who is that? Noda, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Good. good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I love to see your face. It's been too long. It's been a long time. So, Hi, Minota. Yeah, uh, Phil, good morning. Good morning, Hi. Pam. It's great to be with you guys this morning. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump in with a word of prayer together, and then, um, and then we'll kind of talk about our, what we're going to do for this morning, okay? Father God, thank you for, for being with us here in this place this morning, and thank you for these tools that allow us to join together, um, that we're, that we're going to join together in experiencing you this morning is such a privilege, and we thank you for your son Jesus who made this all possible, who made the, who made the way for us to connect with you and, and, uh, and, and gave it all so that we could have this privilege, Father. We, uh, we love you. And we pray that we would experience you in wonderful and beautiful ways this morning. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do this morning is talk more about uh, the glory of God. We're going to talk about our uh, kind of Bible reading plan, what, what, what I do. Um, so, and uh, uh, Beth, thanks for joining us. Um, and uh, so what you need for this morning is, of course, your Bible. So we're going to open that up this morning together. Having a notebook is also a tool that I want you guys to have. So grab a notebook of some sort, grab your Bible, of course, a pen. And then, uh, you know, you don't have to do this, but I like having the coffee as well. Yeah. Representing this morning, North Hills Church. <laughs> so I'll be taking a few sips on that as we go. Okay. So first, first thing I want you guys to do as we, as we start up this morning um, is grab your notebook and grab that pen. When we come uh, into these morning times, right, it's, it's before work probably for many of you or before your plans for the day, that kind of thing. It's a good place to, to place your time with God. But if you're like me, um, in the back of your mind are all those things that you need to get through every day. And we need, to, we need to set those aside for a minute. And so what, what I want you to do with your, with your notebook is, is take that for just a minute right here, right now, and don't go searching for everything you need to do. Don't go make a to-do list. But take your notebook and start writing down all, any of those things that are nagging in your head that you might need to do today. So that you know, okay, I've taken them from here. I've put them down on this paper. I'm not going to forget about them, but I can set those aside now. And, and that's a tool that works for me so that I don't have to like, so my mind doesn't have to keep cycling back to that while I'm trying to talk with God and experience God. Um, it's just, it's just uh, right there set aside on that piece of paper for a minute so that, uh, so that I can just be in conversation with God. Um, I do this actually with my family where if I'm calling it quits on a day of work and I need to go home and be present with my kids and my wife, um, I'll sit down for a couple minutes before I go home and I will make up that list of like, Oh, these were the things I didn't get to that I still want to get done, but I'm writing them down right now. I'm, I'm sometimes I'm putting them in my, in my calendar right now to find the time for them later so that I can go home and I can turn that off and I can just be present with, with my kids and my wife. Um, and so it's a, it's a good, good little tool that works for me. So hopefully you guys are writing those things down kind of free free from those 
Um, that's also why we pray when we open up is uh, refocus, refocusing our, our mind on God, opening up our heart uh, to him to, to have that conversation. Now, uh, most of you have probably heard like, oh, if you're going to do devotions, if you're going to read your Bible, you need to go find a quiet place. You need to go find that, that special, comfortable, you know, idyllic, quiet place to, to read your Bible. And um, I want to tell you this morning that that's, that hasn't really been quite true in my experience. Um, I'm extroverted and I am a verbal processor and um, <laughs> Kathy's raising her hand <laughs> and, uh, um, and, uh, and so I can do this just as well in a coffee shop with two or three people around where I'm reading the Bible out loud and, and processing out loud as I can in that quiet place. But if you are more the introvert or you like to process your thoughts by yourself or that kind of thing, then by all means, go find that quiet place. Um, that was kind of the model that Jesus presented where he would go up to the mountain. He would go find a quiet place to go experience God. And so there's definitely value to that. If you think about like, you know, the typical, you know, teenage dating relationship, what do those people do, right? They find this person who has, you know, value for them, who's, who's sweet to them, their, their sweetheart or whatever. And what do they do? They grab that person by the hand and they sneak away. They go, they kind of go find a quiet place where they can just go experience that person um, and, and dwell with that person for a moment. And so the, you know, there's no guilt or shame in, in going and hiding to be with Jesus, to be with our Savior. Uh, good morning, Jan, and good morning, Jeremy and Rebecca. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, there's no shame in, in, in sneaking away. Uh, one of my favorite places when the, when the weather was cooler uh, was uh, in the past when we had, you know, our backyard set up kind of the way I liked it was I like to get outside and, you know, and go sneak away because as people are waking up and going to the bathroom or finding finding something to eat or whatever inside, I could get away from those distractions and go outside and go sit in the backyard. And so uh, when our weather cools down again, uh, I got a porch swing set up in our new backyard here and I'll be, that'll, that'll probably be my spot <laughs> in the cooler weather. So, uh, so it's okay to go find, sneak away and find that quiet, comfortable, you know, place for, for you to experience God. Um, as we jump into his, his word today, I just want to remind you guys that this is kind of, you know, one of a four-part series, four steps. And so last week we talked about praise. Um, and so my typical morning would start off with um, me singing, you know, a worship song, a hymn, something like that to, to praise, to worship God, uh, to kind of renew my love for him, remind me of how much I love him and how much he loves me. And then I would jump into reading scripture. And we found this in Exodus 24 when we read that together last week. So if you didn't get to watch that, um, it's on our YouTube channel, at the North Hills YouTube channel. You can scroll back through our Facebook videos and find it there. And then it's also linked on our website uh, uh, in the past messages section. So you can go check that out as well. Um, and then next week, we'll be talking about prayer. And the following week, we'll be talking about seeking God's glory throughout our day. So... Um, Let's turn in our Bibles this morning to, uh, let me see what I wrote down, Matthew chapter 13. We're going to look at uh, just a very small section, Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 46. That's what we're going to read together. And I, I tried to pick something really small that had some, some great deep meaning so that we could talk, so that we could spend more time talking and experiencing that together uh, that way. So uh, turning your Bibles there. Um, if you're unfamiliar, uh, if you're watching this and you're unfamiliar with the books of the Bible, where to find things, that kind of stuff, you know, it might all look the same if you're looking at the end of your Bible here. Uh, it's just all a bunch of, you know, same pages. But uh, Matthew is the first book of the New Testament, new being the, the, like the latter half of the Bible. And so, um, but it doesn't split exactly in half. And so I'm going to flip mine open and kind of show you an approximation of where to find this, Matthew 13. Okay, here's kind of the, the ratios. So uh, where, where I'm opening this book, that's, that's bringing me to Matthew. 
So there's our ratios. <laughs> so this is the first half of the book, you know, and of course that flips to my left-hand side. So that's where you can find Matthew, first book of the New Testament. Of course, you can always go to the kind of the index in the beginning to, to find that. So uh, Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 46. Now here's what we're going to do as we read this. You have your notebook available. You got your pen right next to you. Um, there's two ways you can read your Bible. You can read it like a story and you can just experience it or you can dig in and you can study it. And the, the, the story, when I was thinking about that, that's actually what drew me to this story uh, when I was kind of collecting some of my thoughts. Uh, this story is about a guy who finds treasure in a field. And, uh, and so you can read that you know, as a story and just sort of experience you know, the parable and the, that story. Um, or you can dig in and dive in and study. And my goal for when I'm experiencing the glory of God is that I grab his word and then I take it into my day. I, I want to I wanna like be thinking about it and mulling on it, you know, throughout my day. Maybe I want to remember it enough to be able to come back to it, you know, years down the road and, and think about that again. I want the, the truth that I hear from God to kind of embed in my heart and maybe to be able to take it with me. And so what I do kind of at first glance is I at first read it as a story. Um, and, and then I go back and kind of do the study part. Think of it like this. Uh, you know, this, we're gonna about to read a story about a guy who finds a treasure in a field. Well, what do you do if you find a treasure in the field? Well, that treasure is valuable, and so you go after it first, right? Like I'm kind of telling you the, the moral of the story before we read the story, but that treasure is valuable, so you go after it. You go do whatever it takes to get it. So we've prioritized and we've made time that we're going to be here and we're going to do this because God's word is a treasure. His presence is a treasure. Um, but there's, there's the hard work of digging that treasure up, and, and then there's the the moment afterwards when you brushed the treasure off you know maybe it's like you know a little statue maybe it's you know some gold coins or whatever you know you picture as buried treasure uh you brush it off and you admire it you sit and you admire it and i actually kind of flip those backwards when i'm when i'm with god is yes I, i prioritize getting to my time with god first like you know, like, uh, uh, um, make that a priority, but then I actually flip them backwards where I spend time treasuring it kind of like, I want to be in awe. Like when you open the chest, <gasps> you know, Oh man. And I, and I treasure it first. So I just read the story and then I come back and I do the digging later because I want to like almost enjoy the journey then to it. And then, and then I'll actually return back to treasuring it as that story as the Lord speaks to me through that story and it takes on new layers of meaning and that kind of stuff. So let's read this together. I'll read it out loud. You guys read it along with me. As I'm reading, if you guys think, oh, that's interesting. I need to look that up or I, I got a question about that or whatever. Write that down. That's the digging. That's, that's where we, you know, we're going deeper and stuff like that. Okay. So uh, where are we at? <laughs> Okay, verse 44, Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, he went and sold all he had, and he bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he had found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Take a minute, write down any questions you have, and then just dwell on this story for a minute. Just think about it for a minute. Who are the characters in the story? Keep thinking about that for a minute.
who do these characters represent? Think about that for a minute. What does this tell me about God, who he is, his nature? What does this tell me about me? About the nature of man. And then are there any covenants? Are there any promises here that, uh, that I can hold on to? Okay, we ran through that pretty quick, but uh, um, I want to just say good morning to a few more people since we've had some more join us. Uh, Michael, good morning. Margie, thanks for being with us. It's good to have you guys here with us today. We're reading from Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 through 45. And so that's what we're about to talk about here um, as we kind of process together now this, this uh, set of scripture. And so those questions that I was just saying were kind of my thought process when I'm, when I'm reading, you know, just the story. But before I go digging in, just reading the story, I'm looking for that. And, and I'm really asking God to, to tell me those things like that we're, we're looking for, for like wisdom, like the book of Proverbs talks about the wisdom of God's word. And, and, and we're asking for a supernatural experience. There's people who have read the entire Bible who still remain, you know, atheists, or there's people who study the Bible in kind of like a, a, you know, scientific, historical, collegiate kind of setting, university setting, who are studying it as a historical document. But we're asking God for something different to happen here this morning. We're asking him to be present with us and supernaturally speak to us through these words that not only like, yes, he's speaking to us right directly as we read off those words, but for something more to happen where like our hearts connect over these words where it's like, he's saying like, this is for you. This is what you need to hear today. Um, because there's so much like, this is the God of the universe, the creator of the universe who said these things or who inspired these things to be written down. And, and so there's so much like pregnant in each of these passages, this, these, uh, two verses or three verses right here have spoke to me over the years on how do I manage my finances? That they, there's wisdom pearls wrapped up in there that have, have, you know, like influenced me where like through that God taught, told me, taught me about how to manage my finances. There's, there's, there's wisdom pearls in there about how to read my Bible. We're talking about that this morning. There's wisdom pearls in this about how to seek, like have your heart seeking after the Lord. Um, and so there's, there's so much here and, and he teaches something new over and over again as we read the same passage because 
his, his word is alive and it's active and it's speaking to us. So um, I'm just going to give you guys some examples now of like what I'm, what I'm, you know, going, Oh, Oh, cool. Oh man. That's, you know, as I'm reading through this and um, you may or may not have had an answer to every one of those questions that I said, as we were reading through it. Um, but if, if you didn't write them down, go back and write those down. They're not like the perfect set of questions, but a really good set of questions to maybe ask yourself as like a, almost a, a thinking guide, not a study guide. We're just thinking, we're, we're listening to the Lord. So a listening guide, um, you can go back and rewatch this video, you know, it'll be posted up and you can write down those questions if you want, or sort of rewrite them in your own words and make them your own. But when I, when I'm, when I'm reading this, as I'm, as I'm reading it to you guys, all these thoughts are swirling in my head. And, and so I'm just going to share some of them with you to kind of like let you in on, on, you know, how it comes alive for me. And so the kingdom, ver verse 44, I'm going to start reading it again. The kingdom, like my mind already, train of thought, kingdom. Okay, what is the kingdom? Oh, I love the, the kingdom of heaven. Okay, this is, this is what we dream of. This is, this is what we join Jesus in. You know, this is, this is what's here now, but not yet fully accomplished. This is, you know, and, and so like my, my train of thought is already, is already rolling and it's going to say is like, okay, it's going to tell me what, what that kingdom of heaven, that desire of my heart is like, it's like a treasure. And, and so then I like, um, my mind is just rolling of like, what is treasure? What do I treasure? Okay, it's saying that the kingdom of heaven should be my treasure because it's saying the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. So do I treasure the kingdom of heaven? Like, you know, like <laughs> here we are five, six words in and my mind's already just rolling, you know, and that's enough for me to think about for weeks, right? <laughs> just in those couple words. And so um, um, uh, let's, let's press on, but the kingdom of heaven is, a, is like a treasure hidden in a field. And I try to imagine what is a treasure hidden in a field like? Because sometimes, you know, we're reading this and, it, and we're 2,000 years afterwards. What, you know, these are the actual words, a, a translation that's translated so, so that it makes it easier for us to understand. But, but um, you know, many of us don't live, you know, in a place where we go spend our, our days in a field, Right. Is this a farm field? Is this a, just a, you know, an open field of, of, you know, wilderness, you know, but many of us don't spend our days in a field. And so there's value to me saying, you know, okay, Lord, what is, what is the kingdom? What's the king? What is the kingdom of heaven? Like, what's a treasure? What is this field? Cause, cause it's pregnant with meaning and, and he's going to speak to me. And, and it says when a man found it, he, he hid it again. Who is this man? Why would he hide it? You know, well, he hid it because it was something precious to him and he didn't want somebody else to get it. Um, we, uh, we don't hide the kingdom of heaven today, just to be clear. <laughs> we go share it with everybody. <laughs> but, uh, um, but for the story, right, the parable, <laughs> he hid it because he wanted to go buy that field. He wanted to buy that treasure. He wanted to pursue that treasure with everything he had. Um, uh, uh, it says, then in his joy, the joy of finding the kingdom of heaven. Can you remember the moment? This is where my head was going. Can I remember the moment when I found the kingdom of heaven? I was five years old. I was kneeling at a light blue couch that had this little pattern on it of a white dot in the center with four little pink dots around it that were supposed to represent a flower. And, and, as I, and I was experiencing, you know, this anxiety, I couldn't sleep at night. And when my parents prayed over me, then I could fall, I would experience peace and I could fall asleep. And I'm like, what's that about? And they started telling me about Jesus and they started telling me about the kingdom. So, so I'm remembering back to, to when I, when I found the kingdom and I experienced that joy of, I found it, I found it, you know, and I, and I want more of that and I want more of that. And, and so this is reminding us like, just remember your first love, remember your first love because that is the kingdom of heaven. It's like that. It's like when you first found Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is that kind of joy that you can experience on an ongoing basis. And, uh, um, and, uh, and he sold all that he had and he bought that field. 
you know, where, where have we heard that before? Okay, you guys can chime in. Like, well, let's start processing together. He sold all that he had and he bought that field. Where have you, this is a Jesus parable, but where else, like, this, this is a common theme. Jesus talked about this in other places. So where else, where else was this kind of represented by Jesus? When he was talking to uh, the rich young ruler, told him to go and sell all he had to be, to get the kingdom of heaven. Minota just said that uh, I'm going to I'm going to repeat what you say, Minota, over to Facebook. Uh, Minota just said over on Zoom that uh, Jesus told the rich young ruler to. Sorry about the shadows on my face, guys. Uh, uh, Jesus told the rich young ruler to sell all he had and and follow him. If he sold all he had, gave it away, he'd inherit the kingdom of God. That's right, Minota. That's a that's a good reference. Anybody else have any other ones? Uh, Jesus told the disciples to, you know, like drop their nets and follow me, right? Like that was, that was their profession, right? Like there's a similar theme there, but uh, you know, the point when we, when we start thinking about where this ties in with other scriptures and other things that we've heard, you know, Jesus say other things we've heard in the scriptures, the point is that now, like now we see the theming, the theme emerging of, of the kingdom of heaven is a treasure, and and the kingdom of heaven is worth pursuing and the kingdom of heaven is worth more than anything we can possess it's 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 worth it should be our greatest joy our greatest treasure and uh and and, and it is those things we have the opportunity to have that um and uh and it's and it's speaking to to us and it's it's uh reinforcing the point by saying it again you see how it says that word again Whenever you see a word again, uh, you go, okay, we're, we're saying the same point here, the same message. He's going to say it a different way so to try to hammer home the point. So what's the tie between the two? What's the theme between the two? Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant. Well, who is a merchant? What does a merchant do? What is a merchant in, in Jesus' time think, you know, thinking about? That would be one of those things that I write down. What if I like, I need to go look that up. I need to go see what a merchant's like, because what can I learn from that? You know, um, he's like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and he sold everything he had and he bought it. So again, there's this like taking action to pursue the kingdom of God. That's what we're doing here this morning. We're taking action to pursue the kingdom of God, to experience his glory through, through these passages and often, so I usually read through the Bible in a year. It's kind of my reading plan and, and that kind of thing. And often when I'm doing that, what's amazing is that just this generic read through the Bible in a year plan, like I'm hearing a passage that's something that, that I need that specific day. Like it lands on that day uh, because this is alive and active. And, and so we're, we're seeking his glory every day and we're experiencing it through these words because it's not just a uh, study it's alive and active so after i read the story portion i talked about you know story then study that that we're like we're experiencing the awe and the wonder then we go you know then we go dig we're kind of doing it backwards uh then i might go use what i've written down on my notepad like the what is a merchant you know and that kind of stuff and your computer is a fantastic resource one of my favorite websites is called blue letter bible blue letter Bible. I think it's just, you can search blue letter Bible. You can write blue letter Bible.org out. I think, and it'll take you there. Or I think BLB.org, I think takes you there as well. Um, but that site, I just have it. I just have it like bookmarked on my computer. Um, that, uh, that site allows you to, uh, you know, choose any translation you like. It allows you to see the original Greek or Hebrew. Um, it allows you to, um, uh, you know, I mean, it'll help you pronounce those words. It will, it will uh, show you ties, tie-ins between different scriptures, uh, things like that. So that's a really great resource. Um, I might, I might just do a Google search on, on, you know, what was a, a merchant like, you know, who were these merchants, you know, around Jesus's day. And I might get to hear another pastor preach on it. I might, you know, be able to pull up pictures if it's, you know, a field, 
you know, uh, you know, like you might look up, what does a field look like in, you know, near Jerusalem, you know, or something like that, you know, because then you get in the, you start to get in the understanding of what did, what did those people picture who are hearing this from Jesus when they heard a field, you know? Um, and, uh, and so then I go do start doing the, the, um, the, the digging in and I might only have time for the first, the first reading when I'm sitting with God in the morning, but now I'm wondering, my curiosity is sparked and I'm wondering, and, you know, later on in the day, you know, where I might be tempted to look on, you know, Facebook and read somebody's newsfeed or, or, you know, in the evening we'll turn on the TV or something like that. I'm remembering like, Oh, but I wanted to know what that meant. I wanted to see what, what, you know, who, who are these merchants? And, and I've got something else like self-assigned homework, really, to like continue dwelling with God, continuing to know his story, saying, like, God, I, I want you to speak to me through this. And, um, and, you know, and so it can be something that you kind of carry with you. And then um, uh, the, kind of the last piece of it is that I do kind of dwell on this throughout the day. Like, I'll, I'll retell myself the story. Uh, later on in the day, not, not out of self-discipline, not like, it's not like I've set, you know, a timer on my phone or a time in my calendar where I'm going to retell myself the story. It's a, you know what, I'm going to allow myself, I'm going to allow myself for my mind to wander there. I'm going to allow my, my mind to wander there and experience this story over and over again and continually ask like in a little short prayer, Lord, what are you teaching me through this right now? Because sometimes, <clears throat> what I read doesn't seem like it really connects with me that morning real, real strongly. Sometimes I'm just blown away. And sometimes it doesn't seem to connect with me that strongly. Sometimes those questions I asked, I don't fill in many of the answers. But then later on in the day, my path crosses with somebody and it's a divine appointment where that story's for them that day. Or that story informs me how I should proceed in that relationship with that person. Right? Maybe this is because one of us today is going to have to make a decision what we treasure later today. You know, maybe it's a buying decision. Maybe it's, uh, uh, you know, choosing to rearrange our schedule so that we can continue meeting with God daily decision. Maybe it's a, a uh, you know, we're persecuted a little bit for our faith later today or something like that. And, and we have to choose what is our treasure we have to examine our hearts and say, what do I really value? And, uh, and so that might be why this story is here this morning. That might be why God put it in our paths this morning. And, uh, and so we, we, we allow our mind to wander back to this. We, we allow this to start becoming a part of our, our day. And uh, um, I think I'm going to wrap up there so that uh, we can honor you guys' time and you guys can get off to work or whatever. But uh, um, that's, that's how I, that's how I, I typically read my Bible when I'm just talking, you know, day to day, you know, enjoying God kind of reading my Bible, not, not necessarily like, you know, I'm studying to write a sermon or, or uh, preparing for, you know, small group teaching or something like that. I want to, I want to come to him where it's not work, where it's just me experiencing him. And so uh, open in prayer. I usually close in prayer um, where, um, uh, you know, I thank the Lord for what he's taught me, but throughout that whole time, you can have an ongoing conversation with God. When I was, when I was asking you those questions for me, sorry, I missed this and didn't say this. When I, when I was asking you guys those questions for me, it's almost like an ongoing prayer where I'm like, when I say like, what does this teach you about, you know, God and who he is? I, I'm usually asking him in the quiet, in my mind, Lord, what are you, what are you teaching me about who you are? Or what, What's your promise to me in this passage? Or what does this teach me about the nature of man and who I am? You know, those kinds of things. And, and so we're taking it from a study, a work experience, to a supernatural God experience, to a glory of God experiencing him kind of an experience. Um, so hope that was a blessing for you guys today. Let's close out in prayer real quick. And then, um, and then uh, we'll let you guys all go. All right. Thank you, Father, for this time we had this morning together uh, with, with you, Lord, and with each other. 
thank you for these folks who have taken time to, to be with me this morning. It's such an encouragement to me that, that uh, there are many of us all participating in your kingdom, seeking you, uh, digging for that treasure, Lord, together. It's, uh, it's such a blessing to, to be experiencing that together. And, and uh, Father, we pray that, that, that you would continue speaking to us throughout our day, that we would continue to let our minds wander to this passage today, that we would have an ear open to you listening for maybe somebody we can share this with or listening for the, the practical, everyday, hey, I'm speaking to you moments uh, where, you, where you show up in our lives and, and say, here, this is for you. Uh, I wrote this for you today. And uh, Lord, we, we love you and we want to continue pursuing you and chasing after you as we know you've already chased after us and pursued us. And Father, we pray that we're growing closer to you and more in love with you every day, Father. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for, for uh, being with us. Uh, um, if any of you guys have questions or something like that, I'm, I'm just going to hang out for a minute and I'll leave the cameras running and I can answer questions and stuff. Uh, we can talk about it, but uh, if you guys need to run to work or or anything like that, uh, you know, just just feel free to to tune out and, and have a great day. Okay, Mike, Mike Hicks, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here with us. Um, you have a great day too. All right. So, any questions? Facebook, you guys can write in. Um, Zoom, you can. We can keep the conversation going. You guys can, you know, ask a question or whatever. I am so happy to see faces. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to see your face too, Minota. <laughs> what are you making us for breakfast, Zach? What? What are you making us for breakfast? That's my question. Uh, uh, <laughs> I hadn't thought about it yet. Um, I skip <laughs> breakfast most days, just so you guys know. Um, uh, I like the coffee, but uh, I skip breakfast. Um, oh, I got to repeat the question over here. Um, Kathy Hutchins asked what I'm making for breakfast. <laughs> and, uh, so I skip breakfast most days. The, the coffee is important to me but because uh, I just enjoy it. But um, some days I don't drink coffee either. Some days I'm like, I need to hydrate. and I pound the water. Uh, but for my boys, when they go out there in a minute, uh, we'll probably either do cold cereal or like eggs and toast. That's kind of our go-tos at our house. I love, I personally love some pesto on toast with an egg, you know, like a over easy egg on top. I could eat that every day. So um, that, that's a good one, but yeah. Very good little question. <laughs> um, any other questions you guys have about, about uh, you know, this stuff or life at the Schiffer household? Um, let me throw this out there too. Uh, we're gonna talk about this more in, in future weeks, but uh, Having a, a journal is a really good tool. So, so my notebook is actually here and I use that to write down, you know, oh, I need to look this up and that kind of stuff. But a journal is a really good tool for in your walk with God as well, because uh, this is a, um, a, a, a practice in thinking. It's a practice in, in, in us like allowing our brains to go somewhere. And, and, but when you're writing it down, sometimes it helps actually like, I don't know, psychologically they say it like helps like get trains of thought rolling sometimes when you're writing it down. Um, but what, I, what else I love about this is, um, you know, we can be a modern day David, uh, a man and woman after God's own heart writing down the Psalms, right? The, the hard times and the good times, the praises and the, the moments where we say, I need to trust you, Lord. And I've gone back and read mine and went like, wow, that was awesome. That was a tough moment. I remember that moment. And now looking back, I see how God, you know, was present in that moment, how God came through for me so big, how, how he sustained me or how he lifted me out of that moment or how he answered those prayers or that kind of thing. And, um, and that just continues to embolden us and encourage our faith. So a uh, really good tool to have um, like where I'll, I'll read the story. And then I, those questions, I don't have those written down on a sheet or anything. That's just kind of, you know, kind of embedded in because I've been doing this for a while in my mind. And so I'll sit down with this and I'll be thinking and writing 
kind of, you know, processing that, uh, um, or I, I set the Bible aside and I just, you know, start like writing all those thought processes and flows. Um, uh, Jeremy and Rebecca say that, uh, I need to eat some breakfast. It's important. <laughs> I do some mornings. It's just not like I don't wake up starving. And so sometimes I, I wait till 10 or something like that. And, uh, uh, and, and, you know, eat when I'm, when I'm there, you know, when I get hungry later on. So Jan, let me, let me read your note here. Jan Berghaus says in verse 44, I thought that it appeared that the man was selfish by hiding the treasure again. I have a hard time justifying that. I totally agree, Jan. I, I experienced it in the exact same way that, um, uh, that's why I, I don't know, maybe you joined us after I said that, but I said like, we don't hide the kingdom of God. Like we share the kingdom of God with everybody. We don't, we don't hide it. Um, but I think that in this parable, it expresses the point, you know, and, and we can be open to dialogue. You can disagree with me that, uh, um, I think it expresses the point that, uh, this was something very valuable to him and basic human nature says when I treasure it, I want it for myself, you know? And I, and so like, like my boys, little boys, right? Like they go hide food. <laughs> because because it's a cookie or something like that it's a food bar that they like or whatever and they want it for themselves and so it's really just it's kind of further hammering home the point and expressing the point i think for this man that that this was really important to him uh you know because when we if we're honest you know we're still selfish adults and if it was a you know, a, a, a literal treasure chest in a, in a field, we might do the same thing where we, we selfishly go like, Oh, I'm not going to tell anybody about that until I can buy this place. Cause I want that, you know? Um, and, and so I think it's really just there to express the point that like he, this was, this was very valuable to him. Uh, were you going to say something, Kathy? Yeah. Could it be also, you know, so when you first are like learning about the treasure that's Christ and you don't, fully get it so you are kind of keeping it everything to yourself you know and you're you're a sponge and you're soaking in and you're soaking in and then especially at that time you feel like you um have to be come good before you can really accept christ a lot of times and so so we can actually buy that by being good even though we know that and i think that's what jan's talking about you know there's no buying of the treasure mm -hmm. of Christ, mm -hmm. but we feel that way. Mm -hmm. It's like you said, human nature. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Some good insights, some good stuff to think about. Thanks. Were you guys able to hear? I, I tried to turn up the volume on my computer and lean in with my microphone. Were you able to hear Kathy's comment that she just shared, or do I need to repeat it? Uh, somebody weigh in on Facebook. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a lag here the second. Were you guys able to hear Kathy's comment? I want to hear you summarize. Uh, not really, no, is what Jeremy just said. Okay, let me let me try to repeat all that back. <laughs> uh, Kathy, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Kathy was just saying that uh, uh, that the, the comment of the 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 guy that's uh, hiding the the treasure again she said maybe it's like when you when you are new in the faith you feel like maybe you're you're not ready to share it maybe you feel like you need to you're not good enough and you need to earn your faith or something like that and and so you know i'm, I'm shortening and summarizing but that that early that early experience of, of faith that early experience of the treasure of this relationship with jesus um, sometimes we don't feel worthy. Sometimes we don't feel like we've earned it yet, uh, that, that there's something we need to do, that we need to be better or something like that. And she's, she is saying that uh, this story could reflect, you know, that part of human nature as well in, in, the, in the faith journey. Is that, is that sum it up, Kathy? Cool. Uh, all right. There are a couple more Facebook comments here. Let me kind of scroll back up. Uh, Margie says, Notes in my Bible do that for me also. Saw this morning where 72410 was lamenting over David's illness and look where he's taking me now. Very cool. Great. Thanks for sharing, Margie. Um, Phil was replying to Jan and said, the treasure 
wasn't his until he purchased the field. He was trespassing when he found it. So yeah, great, great train of thought, Phil. Uh, you know, like the, the observation is what makes the story come alive and what makes it real to us. That's what makes it stick uh, for us. And, uh, and so great observation um, um, uh, um, about the, the trespassing, that, that, it, that it wasn't his until until he made it his, until he gave up everything else and said, this is, this is my treasure. And, uh, and that's very much the, the um, part of the, the truth of this story. Phil, you're right on the money if we were preaching about it, because um, when we're reading our Bibles and we read, it's often important to read what comes before and what comes after. And the, story, the parables before and after that Jesus was teaching were the parables of like, the, the seed that's thrown on good soil and rocky soil in the path. And, and so these stories are, are stories of people who, who, you know, are shallow rooted and, and they fall away or that there will be, you know, like sorting between the good fish and the, and the bad fish and things like that, where, you know, not everyone will inherit the kingdom of God because this has to be your treasure. It's about your heart loving the Lord more than anything else. Um, and that those are the people that will spend eternity with God because they love them. And uh, so your, uh, your, your, your insight, Phil, just hammers that home. Um, scrolling through some more uh, That's it. comments here, but uh, miss you too, Margie. <laughs> so great. Well, it was so good to be with you guys here uh, this morning. Next week, we're going to talk about the role that prayer plays in, in my mornings, uh, why we pray, how I pray, all that kind of fun stuff. And, uh, um, and so we'll be doing that uh, a little bit, um, sharing, sharing some of those insights with you guys. And, um, and, uh, and so we're, we're not putting all the pieces together necessarily in these mornings of like how my morning plays out because I want to leave room for us to all talk and to uh, um, kind of break it down the why. Um, but um, uh, remember that, you know, you can go, you can go spend some time worshiping the Lord, turn on a YouTube playlist now, sing a song while you're driving on the radio, whatever it is. And that's an important part of my, my mornings as well. Prayer is an important part of the morning and we're going out there. We're taking, you know, the love we have for the Lord, the word we've heard from him and we're taking it into our day, you know, and we're going to, we're going to go care, use that to carry us through our day. Okay. All right. Love you guys. I'm sure my boys are starving. So I'm going to go make them some breakfast and uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, see you guys uh, sometime sometime next week, probably, uh, you know, between now and then, or, or at noon for prayer. You guys are tuning in for prayer. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.